Uh, Margaret, we're glad you're here. Jerome, glad you're here. Madhu, glad you're here. We got a good a good crew. We have 42 attendees and three panelists, and it is 5:01. So, um, in the interest of maximizing our time together, normally I'd wait a little bit because I know not everybody is punctual, but I know we have a lot of stuff to cover. So let's go ahead and and jump into it. Um, okay. Hey everybody, <laughs> we we appreciate you guys being on the uh, on the webinar with us today. Uh, my name is Chip Reeves. I'm the president of Bigger Brains. We are primarily known as an e-learning company. We do a lot of off-the-shelf uh, video training, uh, and some of you have seen our, our YouTube channel. When this whole uh, pandemic situation happened, uh, and we recognized that a lot of people were working from home, we wanted to do something to help, and so we did a couple of things. We put some of our training up for free on YouTube, uh, and we started scheduling these free training sessions uh, for Tuesdays uh, called Work From Home Tech Training Tuesday, because who doesn't like a really long title? Uh, and we reached out to some of our best teachers and experts and friends uh, and asked them if they had topics they could share that would benefit people who are working from home. Uh, and uh, hopefully that is you. So let me flip through a couple of slides here and then I'll turn things over to Amy. Just some housekeeping notes. A lot of you have probably been on Zoom meetings, I'm guessing, uh, recently. Uh, I've been on four so far this week and it's only Tuesday. Uh, one thing that's different about a Zoom webinar versus a Zoom meeting is that you're automatically muted uh, and you can't unmute yourself. Uh, later on, uh, if you do want to talk, um, then raise your hand. There's a button for raise hand, and I can unmute you from here, or Jackie can unmute you from here. Um, but also, you can type a question into the chat anytime. There is also a question section. I actually try not to use it just because I think the chat works just as well. But if you do want to type a question in the, in the question section, we'll keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, for anybody who couldn't make it or has to drop off early, we will have a recording of today's session available on YouTube probably tomorrow. Uh, you can look for that on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash biggerbrain743. Don't forget to wash your hands. Uh, we also have some upcoming sessions. So next week we have Robert Crane, who uh, like Amy is another Microsoft MVP uh, and a great guy. He is gonna talk about being productive with OneNote. Uh, on April 14th, we have Dr. Rebecca Heiss, who uh, teaches a couple of courses with us. She's going to be talking about dealing with stress uh, and the stress of working from home and the anxiety that comes with it. And then on April 21st, uh, we'll circle back to Microsoft Teams again, and I'm going to present that one. And we'll talk about uh, some management and project management in Microsoft Teams. Uh, all this is brought to you by Bigger Brains. You can find a lot more on our YouTube channel and also on our website, getbiggerbrains.com. So let's talk about today. Um, by far, the number one most requested topic was Microsoft Teams, uh, which makes sense. Microsoft Teams has exploded in usage uh, over the last couple of weeks as the entire planet starts working from home, and apparently a significant majority of the planet starts working inside Microsoft Teams. And when we wanted to find somebody to talk about Microsoft Teams, I could think of nobody better than Amy Babinchak. Amy is a 14-time Microsoft MVP award winner. She's the owner of three technology businesses, uh, including Harbor Computer Services, Third Tier, and Sell My MSP. She's a frequent speaker at IT industry events. Uh, she's been working in the small and medium IT business field for over 20 years uh, and is a legend in the IT industry, I will add. Oh. Um, <laughs> having, having said uh. all that and built you up really big, <laughs> I'll turn oh. things over to Amy. Oh, and legend I makes me feel really old. You know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is April Fool's Day. And April Fool's Day is the official anniversary of my business, HarborComputerServices.net, and it's 20 years. Oh, wow. Well, happy anniversary. I always say, in hindsight, I should have started all of my businesses on April Fool's Day because that would have been <laughs> pretty awesome. But I did that one with malice of forethought, and then I forgot about that awesome idea. But <laughs> All right. But I'm going to so, go my share and let you take over. Okay. Um, let, I'm just going to share my desktop with you guys because uh, we are going to dive straight into Teams and it's a gigantic topic and we have a not gigantic amount of time. So I'm going to try to show you guys as much as I possibly can in the time that we have allotted and Chip might have to just cut it off. So, <laughs> uh, so, so we'll see. All right, so what you should see on the screen right now is Microsoft Teams. And Teams has been around for almost three years at this point. It is by far Microsoft's most popular program that they have ever created. And um, 
they've been challenged this last week because they actually added 44 million new businesses to Teams. In this incredible number. Um, and so, uh, but they've done a great job and we've been having meetings and working in Teams. My, my company really works almost entirely in Teams now. And so uh, it's been it's been pretty smooth and it's just amazing actually, I think how well our tech infrastructure is holding up in general um, across the internet. I mean, Zoom is doing an amazing job as well. And uh, I've been quite pleasantly surprised to see how well our, our internet services are holding up. So the first thing though that people tend to be using Teams for happens to be um, meetings and I want you to know that there's kind of three different types of meetings that you can have in teams. Uh, the first one happens in in chat um, and we popped right into chip so um, in in chat here we can have one-on-one -on -one conversations and it's really less of a meeting kind of an ad hoc video chat thing and the way we do that is we just, you know, we launch a chat. If they're not already in our list, we can come up to the top up here and start a new chat, type their name in and get that going. And then over on the upper right hand corner, we've got a uh, video call button and telephone call button and screen sharing button. So we're able to do those things on a one on one basis to, you know, facilitate normal, ordinary business communications between two people. And so that is that is one type of meeting that we can have in Teams. The other type of meeting, we actually would go into our calendar and you can do this either from Outlook or from within Teams and start those meetings. We can meet now with a whole bunch of people and just type their names in and say, I need to meet with you right now and you know add four or five people or whatever. Or we could also schedule those meetings on our calendar. We've got a new meeting button and we have a drop down here as well. And if we drop down, I need to move this out of the way. If we drop down, we've got two options here, schedule a meeting and live event. These are two separate and distinct types of meetings. So schedule a meeting is what you're maybe used to thinking of as a meeting. It's going to be people both internal and external to your organization uh, in a small group up to, um, I think it's 500 people. So Microsoft considers that small, but but I don't. You know, typically would see this with you know a, a dozen people or or whatnot. And um, those meetings are have certain criteria. They are optionally recorded, so they're not recorded automatically. You have to turn on the recording to get that going. Um, you have the option of having them translate into other languages on the fly. And you can have a transcript made, but by default, none of that happens. So when you're launched into the meeting, you as the person that organized the meeting would have to tick off a couple of check boxes to, to make that happen. As opposed to a live event, which is the third type of meeting. So a live event is more of a broadcast event, kind of like what we're having now. And we can have up to 10,000 people in a live event. And the, the live event automatically records automatically puts that into Microsoft Stream where you can share that recording, you can download that recording, you, you get a Q&A report out of it, so you get a copy of all the question and answers. You also get um, the, the names and email addresses of everybody that, that attended, so you get your attendee report as well. And then you can take that recording and share it out to your website so that other people can, can view it later that weren't able to make that event. So those are the, the three types of meetings. Now, I want to go back to what I first said about, about chat style meetings, where I'm doing a one-on-one. -on -one. At my business, and you'll see up here, I've got a bunch of these chats pinned in a whole big long list of chats with various people that I have. This is functioning as my internal phone system without costing me a single extra dollar. And the way that works, is that I can do one-on-one -on -one chats with anybody really in the whole world, anybody that has a domain name. So all known domains are allowed to uh, start calls from Teams to Teams uh, with me. Now I can't call out to their cell phone number, but I can call out to them on, on Microsoft Teams, whether they're using the free version or a paid version. So it's really quite flexible. So internally, we do all of our calls through Teams. 
And there's some awesome features in here. If I click on myself, I get to actually set up voicemail. So this free internal, internal call system even has voicemail. So I come into, I clicked on myself, I clicked on settings, I click on calls, and I say calls are going to ring to me. If they're unanswered, they go to voicemail. Um, and then I can configure my voicemail just like you do on a phone system to have a personal greeting that says, hey, you've reached Amy, leave me a message, I'll get back to you. And then here in Teams is where I'm going to get notified with that call and the voicemail is automatically uh, trans, trans, a transcript is created and emailed to me as well. So I'll have it in both places. When I have a voicemail next to calls here, over in the menu, there'll be a little red dot to tell me that, um, that I've missed a call and that there's a voicemail waiting for me. Um, so that, that can be a, a tremendous um, call cost-saving opportunity, especially with what everybody's going through right now with the reduced business. If you have people in your company that do not need to make calls outside of the company, using this as part of your internal calling system may work very well for you. Hey, Amy, we have a, a good question in the chat about inviting people to meetings that are outside of your organization. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely do that. You can invite anybody outside to meet with you. It has to be allowed by your administrator. So um, there's a setting in Teams admin. Um, they, just have to, they just have to allow ex external users. Um, when you do that and you schedule the meeting, they'll get an email, whether it's to their, you know, another corporate email system or Gmail, Yahoo, Comcast, any of those, they'll just be able to click in. If they have Teams, it'll open up in their Teams app that's installed on that computer. If they don't, it'll open up as a meeting in the browser. So you can, you can absolutely meet with anybody you want to. Great. Thank you. Okay. Have you run into, Amy, I, one of the questions I've had in the last week is, uh, I, I got approached by somebody who wanted to use Teams for his, uh, I forget, it was a soccer team or something like that. He wanted to stay in touch with all the parents and all the, the players. Um, but he only had, I think, five paid users on his Teams account. And he was worried that there was a limit to the number of guests. And, and I looked it up and I found conflicting information. I, I found some information from Microsoft that said on the free Teams, you can have as many external guests as you want. And then I also found information that said on paid Teams accounts, you're limited to something like 20 guests per paid user or five guests per paid user. Have you ever run into that before? It's, it's more than five, and I want to think it's even more than 20, but there is, there is some limit, and I don't know what that number is. Um, I've not actually known anybody to run into that limit, and it's pooled, so it's not like I'm, I'm a meeting and I can only have so many so many guest you guest people join me it's it would be based on how many licenses the whole company has and then that pool of guests all come together i've never seen anybody actually run into that limit so i don't know what it is off the top of off the top of my head sorry i i haven't either um we did get another question in, in the chat that i'd like to take because this was really interesting i don't know if you saw the news today jerome is asking uh, can the free teams version be used for individuals and families and nonprofits? Um, the answer is yes, uh, but also Microsoft today, Amy, I don't know if you saw the news, they've announced the Team for Families, or Teams for Families. Mm -hmm. It's a new product in the Microsoft Life series or something. It's, it's, I'm not clear if it's available right now, but it's coming, uh, I think the, the initial product coming in the next few weeks. Microsoft likes Teams so much uh, that they um, saw it as an opportunity to create a kind of family communication center too which at first I thought was crazy. And then I thought, no, that really makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, it's a great way for the family to chat and the, um, to stay in touch with each other, to keep track of things like bills. There's uh, built-in kind of financial management tools in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're coming out with an add-on to it that will also tell you where uh, all your family members are, which when I had teenagers would have been a um, very welcome uh, app to have. But uh, in any case, that, <laughs> Unless that's- you're the teenager. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a, uh, I'm not sure what name they landed on, but uh, when I first began to hear about this uh, as, a, as an MVP, we, we have an NDA with Microsoft. Uh, and when I first began to hear about it, they were calling it uh, Teams for Life. And so this For Life series is something that's, uh, that's new for Microsoft. They're going to yet again make a foray into the consumer division, which historically they've not been super successful at. I mean, not that they don't produce the product, just that they're not 
taken up very readily by individuals, but uh, Teams is so popular in the business world, um, it may gain popularity in the on the consumer side just because people are used to using it at work at this point. So that's a good segue into another question we have. Why is Teams so popular? What are the benefits of it and what's the unique selling point is one of our questions. Well, I think we should probably just keep going and let me show some more features. <laughs> if you're not convinced by the end, then let us know. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Um, so, you know, that the main benefit of Teams is Teams is, um, you know, like Outlook, I think of Teams as Outlook for data, right? So Outlook is this amazing application that almost everybody loves that brings together a lot of different pieces, right? It brings together your email, your calendar, your contacts, your tasks. Uh, it's just it's a, just a great, easy to use communications medium. And Teams does that same thing um, really for, for different types of medium, right? So it, it, what happened is people got really tired of email, getting too much email, too much chatter, too much annoying email, not relevant email. It got hard to find their important email. Uh, and so Teams was really formed to solve that problem. And I will say that um, we adopted Teams shortly after it was released um, because as I'm pretty close with Microsoft, I noticed that um, all, the, all the staff at Microsoft started jumping positions and saying, hey, I'm, I'm leaving working in Azure, I'm leaving working in server, I'm leaving working and I'm joining the Teams team. And we're like, what's Teams team? Yeah. And then eventually we found out what Teams team was and it was the people making this product. And, um, and so when I saw that happening, I said, this is, this is going to be uh, a really something that Microsoft is putting a huge amount of effort and investment into. So let me segue that into um, a little bit more on the chat side and then talk about files and, and data organization and what Teams does for you there. So Teams has replaced entirely our internal email. We never email each other internally anymore. That cut down on the volume of email coming through our inbox tremendously. So all of the things that would have been an email, all of, you know, are now just posts in Teams, either in, uh, you know, direct chats to me or direct chats between each other. Um, and I had to drag my staff over there. They didn't believe me. I said, you know, Microsoft says this is going to replace, replace our email. And they all laughed. And then it happened. Is, you know, shortly, I would say about three months in after using Teams, suddenly there was no more internal email happening. It was just better and easier for people, people to do that in Teams. And so if you look here in chat, um, here at the top, these are all of my pinned chats, right? This is all of my internal staff people. I have one pinned chat here that contains all the text. And then I have uh, various pinned chats here that are different, different people that I, I talk to nearly every day. So yeah. they, uh, the way that I pin a chat, so and below here, all of my non-pin chats, right? These are just like my ad hoc chats that have happened. If I knew that I was going to be speaking to Chip a lot, I could come over here to his dot, dot, dots, then just say pin, and then he moves up above the line, essentially. He comes above the fold so that next time I want to, I want to talk to Chip, I don't have to come up here and start a new chat. I've just got him here. I can click and start talking to him right away. The other thing that happens uh, in Teams is there tends to be a lot of grassroots activity as well. So in our, in our um, all text message, uh, what's happened with our recent uh, quarantining going on here in Michigan is that um, the chat, chat changed a bit, whereas they were always in there chatting to each other. Um, also now in the morning, we get a bunch of hello, hey, how are you, how are things going? Um, initial chats. So it's been interesting to see to see how that has changed a little bit. Um, now I want to jump over to the actual teams where we can get we can get more into the the data side of things. Well maybe a good segue to that Amy is so when mm -hmm. would you use a chat and when would you talk in a team? You know 
we use it for considering the chats to be throwaway communications, right? They're in the moment, ad hoc, ephemeral topics. You know, I just, hey, I need to know this thing. Here it is. Okay, thanks. Bye, you know, kind of thing. So a real quick, short conversations, nothing really in depth, nothing that is particularly related to a specific topic or departments that we've laid out in our in our actual team structures and I can kind of show you that as a as some examples here so we have uh, we have several teams we have we have the harbor computer services team which is our main um, our, our main team for the company each team has each company has an all organization team uh, and so and so this is ours when I click into that team I see initially uh, the general topic, and then we have some other channels beneath that. On this general topic, um, here we've got you know a, a bunch of tabs across the top, and these are different types of data that we wanted everybody to have access to um, that is a member of, of the entire organization. Uh, and so under posts here, this is where I will post things that I want everyone to know about, right? So. Um, here we have a great uh, deal from Sticker Mule on updating people's uh, graphics from low quality to high quality for only 19 bucks um, as a, a temporary deal from somebody that we've bought stuff from before. And it would be kind of awesome to let our clients know about that. So, so I made sure that, that, you know, to post that in there. We get RSS feeds from Microsoft about what's new with 365. Um, there's been some delayed shipping times, so we post that in there, uh, you know, that this kind of stuff. And then also in here, we have some different um, locations too. So files that we all that we all need access to. So we have right, we have file lists in here of different types of documents. There's right, there's our VPN files, our insurance documentation, policy templates, the monthly forms that our techs need to submit. Uh, everyone's phone number if they need to look up their cell phone numbers. Um, just, you know, lots of different information that they would need to get to. So and then... The it would historically be on like a network server, but you couldn't easily access a network server when you're on the road or working from home. So this makes it easy wherever you are. Yeah, for sure. There's a definite advantage going on right now to companies that have moved full, moved fully to the cloud because here I don't have to VPN into an office. I don't have to map a drive. I don't have to be connected to anybody. As long as I have internet access, I can get to this information. Now, a lot of this, a lot of this is actually, um, it's all stored in SharePoint on the back end, um, which makes it, makes it, very interesting because it gives us very granular permissions on every every single item in here. So we have full control, um, just as we did when things were on a server. We now have the absolute ability to to lock things down the the way that they need to be. So here, what you're looking at actually is our SharePoint site directly. So here, all the while these files are stored in a team space in SharePoint. This, this file set here under tools are, you know, our ransomware tools and scripts and things that my techs use. These are, these are items that actually only exist in SharePoint, but here I can link them into Teams for, for them to easily access. And then if they want to, they can click on sync in here and sync it down uh, into their, uh, onto their computer so that they would have those files uh, to go if they needed to. Yeah, I have to admit, I'm a very old fashioned guy. So I like to use the sync function for any kind of file folder I'm going to be accessing regularly because that gives me a local copy on my laptop. And even though I can get to it through sync, there's a lot of times I'm just used to going to File Explorer and pulling it up that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I sync certain things. You know, I certainly don't recommend syncing all of your files, but I do sync the um, ones that are important. I also will sync ones. Um, well, my my accounting person or bookkeeper here, she syncs a certain folder down because she needs to be able to drag and drop out of that folder into QuickBooks Online. So having that in her file explorer lets her do that. So this is something that's very interesting that's really changed of how people access files, right? I have them here and I can open them here. And when I open them, I can choose to open them 
within this Teams window, so I would actually see, say, my Excel file right here. Or once that's open, I can say, now actually open that, open that in Excel online. It'll open up in the browser, or I can say open that in my Excel desktop application. And it's just a little drop down box that lets me choose how I want to open that file. So just because it's here in Teams doesn't mean that I don't have the flexibility to access and, and manipulate that file however I want to. Um, and that, and you mentioned about syncing. So uh, if we look here under the Amy team, this is my own private team, right? I'm the, I have my, my own team to kind of track and keep track of all the myriad of different things that I, I have to do. And one of the things I do is a lot of technical writing. So I have a, a writing folder here. And so in my, uh, and I have a bunch of files, right? So, you know, uh, articles that I've submitted here and there. And I do have this synced. So if I look in my file explorer, I've got, right, Amy writing, which is where we just were. And I can see that I have um, those same, right? Submitted to TechGenix, submitted to Woody, a bunch of articles. Um, the same, you know, the same list here that I actually had had in Teams. And then when I go into Microsoft Word, um, here it is again, right? So submitted to TechGenix, submitted to Woody. So once I make those connections, the files are available to me where I'm working. And that's been a big transition in the way that, that we think about files. Instead of you going to the file through a mapped drive letter or something like that, the files come to you where you are. If you're in Teams, the file's there. If I'm in Word, the file's there. If I'm on my desk file explorer, the file's there. It's, it's all the same file. It's just that I get to view it from where I'm working. And um, that is a, that's a new concept that everyone should try to wrap their head, wrap their brains around. Um, you don't go to your data, you should work to have your data come to you. Yeah, the, the, the hardest part that I had, uh, go ahead, Jackie. I was gonna ask, do you need the OneDrive app on your computer to use Sync? You do, but OneDrive is built into Windows 10. So it's there automatically if you're on a Windows machine. If you're unfortunate mm -hmm. enough to have a Mac, um, <laughs> you have to download and install the OneDrive app. I'm kidding, I have a Mac also. Um, but yeah, you, you'd have to install OneDrive if you're using it from a Mac. Okay. Right. Um, so I mentioned that we can secure um, we can secure data. So you might notice over here that there's a couple little locks next to some channels. Um, and so let's let's look at this one because here is my here's my all teams, and I I want to show you how you can know who you're talking to when you're in a particular team, right? If I post something here in this channel as a as a chat, right? Who did that actually go to? Well, up here in the upper right corner, I see that this is org wide. So that's a little eyeball org wide. So it went to everybody in the organization. If I come down into here to, to Project Carl with the lock on it, I see that this is members of the channel only. And so um, this message in the channel, this is only me and Parrish. Nobody else sees this channel. In fact, nobody else in this team knows that this channel exists unless they're listening to this webinar. <laughs> um, so when you create a private channel, the other, members of the, uh, the other members of that team do not even see that that channel exists. Further, as all of this data is actually stored in SharePoint, which is where you would back it up from as well, um, the, it actually spins up an entirely separate location in SharePoint and not even the administrator has access to that location. And the admin will probably not even know that it exists. There are some scripts that we can run as the admin to, to see that there are private channels that we may need to be aware of for, for backup and stuff like that. But we, there's no way that not even the admin can go into that channel and see what that content is. So you can, you can keep things very, very segregated and private in here. And the example that Microsoft always gives for these private channels and the reason that they created them are really was for investment banking. So if you have 
stockbrokers in your in your bank and investment investment bankers on one side and advisors those people are not allowed to talk to each other have their data commingled know what the others are doing uh, for insider trading rules and so this is a the creating a private channel is a very very serious privacy level it's beyond just assigning someone hey you have rights to this it is these things do not even exist unless you're in the in right and having said that i will say that most of the requests that i've had for private channels um, were not from investment bankers uh, the, the most common request we used to get would be a situation where you have a, um, a team that's for all the people in a particular department, let's say, or all the people working on a particular project. And then there were a couple of managers who wanted to be able to still have their own conversation area inside that team, but they didn't want everybody else to know about it. So they wanted a private channel. And Microsoft didn't have that until just a couple of months ago when they added this feature. Mm -hmm. um, the, the way you used to do it is you'd have to have a separate team. So you'd have one team called, you know, Project Sam, and then another team called Project Sam Managers. Uh, and if you wanted to have the private management conversations, you had to go be a man, uh, be a member of that separate team. And that kept it separate and that worked. Uh, but now kind of having it all in the same place is a little bit easier. Yeah. So when you create your, your private channel here, this is a subset of the, t the members here have to be in the team. Right, so it's a, these are this is a subset of people in the team. Now I can create a, a channel and exclude certain people from that channel without having to make it a hyper private scenario. Right, so I can say, hey, you know, this is this is a channel, um, and it only contains you know the the marketing department. You know, so there's three people in in that channel. Other people will see that that channel exists, and um, you can you know communicate externally from it, and you know do all these things. It's not it's not super super private, but it is a separate communication space. You know, nobody could come into it and start communicating unless you invited them into into that mm. sub channel kind of thing. Right. Maybe. So they're, they're really put building a lot more flexibility in, into the ways that these work. Amy, can you show us briefly, like pretend to create a new channel and show how you make it private? Yeah. So, um, so we'll come up here and we're going to say uh, add a channel. So in Teams, everything is under the dot, dot, dots, right? So I'm going to add a channel. Um, we will give this channel a name. And here is, here's where under privacy that I get to choose what kind of this is going to be. So it's either going to be a standard channel or it's going to be a, a private channel. And then I just next it through. And correct me if I'm wrong, there's not a way currently to convert a channel from standard to private or vice versa. There is not. Um, once you have a private channel, it's, it's private forever. Um, that is on Microsoft's roadmap, but I haven't seen them assign any kind of a time frame to that yet. So um, at this point, I have to say who's going to be who's going to be part of this channel, um, and so I will always be part of the channels that I create. And so we will uh, we'll go ahead and add a couple of people into it. Now I can make them members or owners of this group. Owners of the group get to do things um, like create tags, add and remove people, um, and that kind of thing. Members members do not. Members just can post into it, but they can't actually change that that status of that channel. And then now I have a private channel that's got the little lock on it. So one of the last thing I want to take a look at, since it's uh, we're at 35. Um, is just to mention how you, uh, we took a look at how you know who you're communicating with, right? When we looked here, we see that we're in the only channel only as opposed to the org. Um, but I also want to make mention of the, of the activities. So under activity is where you're going to see your notifications. Um, and all your notifications across all of your teams are consolidated into, into the, the one activity feed. And so this tells me whenever, you know, my messages have been reacted to, there's a reply to my message, um, you know, more people have replied to it. Um, 
and then there's this type here at at mention right so in particular that is something where um, Ted has specifically at mentioned me that generally will mean that he is looking for a comment back from me uh, specifically even though he posted that into the all text group um, so that's that's uh, at mentioning is one way and the way you at mention is you just type an at and then you uh, select a person that's a member of that group and then you say hey you know blah 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 uh, and on their end they will get the little notification that they've been been at mentioned and it's something that's just a little more more urgent and then speaking of urgency when you're doing your chats in here um, and your conversations we can also uh, we've got some controls here Right. If I click onto this button that looks like an A with a paintbrush, that's actually a formatting and it opens up a pretty nifty new message type. So here I, I get um, a lot more of my uh, message controls. Right. So I can do things like, you know, like bolding and underlining and just make it make it a little bit more interesting. I can insert links and quotes and stuff like that. Now, that's that's me in a in a chat scenario. Well, let me show you what happens when we're actually in a team and we're looking to do a new post. So, you know, this is the marketing channel. So instead of just a general hey conversation, this is going to be more directed to the to the marketing group. Notice I've got subject line. So much more, uh, this is much more formal conversation um, where we're on, right, on topic to, to the channel that we're in. I've got some controls over here, right? These are my formatting controls that we just took a look at. I've got, I can mark this as an important, so it will get, it will get alert on there. Um, I can also um, make this into an announcement. If I make this into announcements, I can put a picture at the top. I can really do a much bigger headline. So notice I'm getting I'm getting a lot more uh, a lot more controls here. Um, <clears throat> everyone in the group can can reply to this only, or maybe just me and the moderators for this team. If you've got um, certain people that you've designated as moderators for the team, um, and I can post a message in multiple channels as well. So. Um, right, if I've got an announcement that I need to make and I, I want to get it out to different groups of people, I can just come in and select those and, and do different, different things in here. So I've got, I have many different controls. Um, and then there's, there's an, another type as well, um, which allows me to actually make an urgent message and not just an important message. And an urgent message will ping everybody with with alerts on their computer once every 20 seconds until they respond. So if you really have something critical, there's a message type that's called urgent in there as well. So those are the kind of big concepts in Teams and what makes Teams really, really great. Um, you can see that it goes beyond meetings into really managing your full communications, putting the communications where your files are, and letting your data come to you as opposed to you coming to your data. And that's really what the big deal is about Teams. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please put in as many questions as you like and I will hang around with Chip and we will get them answered for you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with an easy one. Can okay. external users be added to channels? Yes. Uh, as long as they have a, a free Microsoft account, and if they don't, they'll be prompted to create one. Um, anybody with an email address right now can be added to a channel, and it's possible in the future they'll change it to anybody with an email address or a phone number if they bring in the Kaizala features. But right now, anybody with an email can be added. But they'll be a guest, right? They'll be a guest, right. And guest permissions are different than member <clears throat> permissions. Those are when you set up the team or go into the team settings, you'll kind of see what guests are allowed to do and what members are allowed to do. But generally, they'll be allowed to participate in the conversations and they'll be allowed to access the files. They won't always be able to access the apps that are associated with the team. But um, it's great for bringing in customers or outside contractors or uh, vendors that you're working with, anybody you need to bring in to whatever the conversation is or whatever the discussion is in that particular team. Mm -hmm.
We also had a couple of questions about Slack and the differences. I mean, I think you've covered some of them, but what is your general thought on Teams versus Slack? So I, I actually have a, a client that uses Slack and um, I, f I just find it to be very s kind of single threaded, right? A lot of, maybe it's the way they're using it, but I find it difficult to follow because it's, I don't see that it's, the data is very well organized. It's just, it's really a chat first, chat forward kind of, um, kind of environment. Uh, you know, I, th I think having, having my data in the same place as my conversations and bringing those two things together is really sort of the, the superpower that we have here in Teams. Yeah, I used to use Slack a lot and really liked it. I, I think it's a lot, what it's, what it's trying to achieve is much simpler. So mm -hmm. if you want all this other functionality, you know, Teams is gonna be better. What other uh, questions do we have here? Uh, I have created, I'm not sure exactly what this means, but I've created at groups and they work in the mobile app, but not in the desktop app. Do you know of an issue? Yeah, I was just looking that up. I, I want to know whether you could create a group in the mobile app. I don't see a way to do, to create a group in the app. That, that, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, Ross, if, if you can share some more information, we'll do our best. Uh, we had another question about can teams be likened to groups.io or yahoo group plus skype for business still trying to wrap my head around all the functionality of teams um i would say that it is both of those things together and yeah you know wrapping your head around all the functionality there's more functionality than what i showed you today in the last 30 minutes uh so i mean it's a it is it's a it's a fairly big full featured app right now and it's only getting bigger. We didn't even talk really about bringing applications into it. And I think actually, Chip, you're going to talk about um, project planning and project management in Teams uh, yeah. when you do your session, right? Yeah, we'll talk about uh, Microsoft Planner and a little bit about the um, project online. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way I, I teach it in my course is, is you know, I, I'm, I'm old as you can tell from the hair. In the 90s, uh, Outlook was kind of your dashboard for all your communication because all of our communication was either telephone or fax, which wasn't computer related, or it was your email and your meetings and your contacts and all of that flowed through Outlook. Today, it's a different world. Everything's a lot more chat oriented. Everything's a lot more data oriented, like Amy says. And so you still have your Outlook uh, for your kind of email and calendar dashboard, but now Teams is everything else. So Teams is all of your communication with all of your internal people organized into, into groups, organized into channels so that you can go back and look at those conversations later so that if somebody's added to that project later, they can go back and look at past conversations. All of your files are sorted into the topic area they're supposed to be that are related to the, the project that you're working on. Uh, you can bring in additional apps, you can bring in outside vendors, but it's really, it's all the communication pieces that Outlook is not. And they work together. I mean, they do tie together, but um, all of the kind of modern communication happens in Teams. At the simplest, you can think of it like a chat app. I mean, think of it like a WhatsApp or a uh, you know instant messenger or um, you know any kind of texting app, because that's what you can do in the chat section. And if that's the easiest place for you to get started, you know that's fine. Um, so you've got the chat there. Chat is just like Skype for Business in a lot of ways. You can talk to people. You can have video calls, audio calls. Um, but then when you start to work together on projects and a project might be just working on a document a project might be everything that your department does a project might be organizing a surprise birthday party take that project turn it into a team break the team out into as many channels as you need might be one might be a thousand to have different conversations about different aspects of that project and then you'll find all your conversations and all your files associated with that project all right there in the same place you know where to go find them when you need to so. so we have a, a few clients that are using a uh, planner in teams to manage their projects and um, bringing planner into teams is is really very powerful and, and the people that are using it in both cases are um, construction firms hmm. so right they're working with a lot of external vendors they're trying to get their external vendors to adopt it you know and not all not all uh, construction contractors are that 
on board with modern tech. But the ones that are coming in, they're um, you know they're able to communicate to them through their to their cell phones usually, and then tick off you know what's going on with with this with the, that build right. Nope, oh, today I you know I need to order the drywall. I have to talk to this vendor. I have to you know, and they'll have kind of their their whole project management scheme in there. And, and everyone that is on that project can see what everybody else is doing, and they do that all within teams because. When they go off site, they've got the exact same thing on their phone. Teams mobile app is is awesome. It's really identical to what you've got here. Microsoft has not stripped anything out of it and yet somehow still made it really usable. Well, I, I'll disagree with that partially. <laughs> the mobile app. So I, you're right, all your conversations, all your file sharing, all of that works great. Your video calls and audio calls, all that works great in the mobile app. Mm -hmm. You know what doesn't work is the wiki, um, which most people don't. Yeah. But we decided to use it for one important function, and the wiki doesn't work in the mobile app. Um, also, if you add other tabs, um, the other tabs don't necessarily work in the mobile app. Um, we have a question from Jason. Uh, Sorry, just trying to get my head around private. Are there any caveats? I'm worried my team members might go crazy creating private channels and then might regret it later. Um, <laughs> Amy, what are your thoughts on that? Well, so as, as the administrator, you can allow or not allow people to create the create private channels or any channels for that matter. Um, so, so the admin does have the, the power to, to do that. Now, what you can do, I mentioned earlier there, as the admin, we actually do not have access to see those private channels. But if somebody came to you and said, I have a problem with my private channel, or I want to get this stuff out of the private channel and you know make it a regular channel now, um, you can go into uh, SharePoint, run a little bit of PowerShell and add yourself to it to make that happen. Um, so it'd be a bit of a manual process to, to pull it out and do that. But um, you have you do have control over, over what happens. So um, as a Teams administrator, you can choose or deny whether people can create private channels. Now I will say the caveat on that is Teams is designed to be a grassroots driven thing. Right. In, in, in years past, um, IT very much was a top down management structure, right? Our files were organized from the top down, big old structure, and then we assigned people in at certain points. And it was really mostly a lot of times organized by, by IT. And those days are over. The data, the channels, the, the organization of the data, where it is, uh, and to a large extent, who's going to have access to it is now supposed to be driven by the end user, which means training. So you are in the right place here with, with bigger brains because end user training is more critical now than it ever has been. Um, the, the power is really um, shifting and the power is in the hands of the users if they're capable of using it and we have to get them up to speed on, on these things. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I see, when we get comments back on our Teams course, um, a lot of times people say, well, I don't see these controls to create Teams and create channels that you're talking about in the course. And it's because our administrators turned them off. And mm -hmm. on the one hand, I understand that because I know that a lot of administrators want to control things. They don't want things to get out of hand. They're afraid, well, what if everybody just starts creating Teams and channels everywhere? Right. My, my experience has been if you if you let people, you know, Teams by default is open like that. Teams by default, any member can create their own team. They can invite who they want to invite. They can create their own channels. You can lock that down, uh, and you certainly want to for certain teams. Don't get me wrong. Not everybody needs to be seeing the conversations that happen in HR or finance. But uh, to give your users the ability to create their own teams on an on-demand sort of situation, yeah, you're going to have a lot of teams that wind up not getting used because somebody created a fantasy football league or something that nobody participated in. But overall, I think the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks. You'll see a lot more usage of teams. You'll see a lot more participation. Um, people will be more creative. That They'll find ways to use it. Um, Amy, your example of having a team for yourself, uh, it was a couple years ago that one of my employees asked me if she could create a team for herself. And my first thought was, well, that's crazy. Teams is for communicating with other people. And then I thought, no, okay, I get it. You know, if you want one place to put all your stuff and have all your files and know you can get to it in the same place where you're getting to, the, okay, I get that. So 
Um, let, let your people explore and, and let them kind of play around and find a solution that works for them. And some of it you're going to be surprised at and some of it you're, you know, going to be disappointed in. <laughs> now, there is a new feature in Teams um, that expires channels that aren't used. Mm -hmm. So um, if, you, if you create Teams or channels and that, that channel doesn't get used, um, as the admin, you can set how many days before an unused channel expires. Um, when it expires, it's no longer available in Teams. The files that it had within it remain in SharePoint. So the, that type of data isn't lost. Um, posts and conversations, that kind of thing, that is mostly gone at that point. Um, but you can get back any of the files if somebody, you know, didn't realize that their channel was going away. But, you know, if, uh, we have ours set to six months. So, you know, if nobody's used a channel for six months, it gets deleted. You know, and that's how what we're doing to kind of keep things clean. Because channels do get created. You know, somebody will be working on something, they'll create a channel, you know, it'll, it'll, they'll use it for a week or two and then they don't touch it anymore. And that's fine. That's actually how Teams is supposed to operate. Like, I need a place to organize this thing. And two people get in there and they start doing something, then they're done with it and they abandon it. And that's, that's what's supposed to happen. So um, and when you're thinking about your admin policies, make sure that you leave room for that kind of activity. Yeah, so definitely. some other questions. Um, one is, do I need a particular type of email address? Uh, no, any any email address that works will will work with um, with Microsoft Teams, as a guest at least. Um, and can you expand more on how you use this for email? Um, Teams isn't really for email. Uh, uh, what I was saying is that Outlook is kind of your email communication, and then Teams is everything else. Um, I don't know of any way that you can actually do any kind of email inside Teams, Amy. I don't know if you know differently. Well, um, we actually receive email in, but I don't think that's probably what you're talking about. Um, when I said we replaced email with it, what really replaced was internal communications instead of internal communications happening as emails that were just not important. Um, now they just happen as as chat inside of teams and so the internal email volume just shrunk down to nothing yeah, now i i can send email into teams so for example i've got all these hidden channels here which hidden just means that i don't have them listed out because the list would be too long there's 66 of them here Notice I've got an email address here, harbor at harborcomputerservices.net. Any email destined to that address automatically shows up in this team. And, and being an IT firm, this is how we organize our alerts. So we have channels for each of our different clients and any alerts instead of those alerts going to email as they used to do in the kind of one big bucket. Now they're organized by, by customer in the channel that, that are, are them. And then when something new comes in, uh, it's easier to discover that that information and that that alert. Uh, that, that's a really good point. And, and the other um, two other points about using it as email. And, and Don, I apologize, I misunderstood the question. But um, in the same way that uh, again, old guy, you know, back in the '90s and 2000s, um, we saw this shift between like letter writing and email. And letter writing was kind of the formal thing that you would do when it was something official, right? And you had to send out a you know, request for payment or whatever. Uh, and email was kind of the more ephemeral, casual kind of a thing. We're kind of adding another level to that, right? People still send letters right. sometimes, but now a lot of that official stuff happens via email. Now Teams and chat is kind of the, the more casual, more quickie, um, you know, easy stuff. And, and yeah, I agree with you. The nice thing is, I mean, I won't say my inbox is is less full, but it's certainly you know less less full than it would have been if I weren't receiving a lot of internal communications via Teams. And the other thing, like Amy mentioned, is uh, every channel in your Teams has its own email address, and so a lot of times when we're having a conversation with an outside uh, group, uh, for example, I'm part of a, a volunteer group um, that's organizing a local training uh, program. We created a team for them. We created a channel for them. And anytime we do need to email each other, we CC that email address. And what that means is that email, sure, it gets emailed out to everybody in the, in the group as well, but a copy of that email is also being saved in that channel. And if there's any attachments to that email, 
um, then that attachment goes into the file section of that channel. And that's a great way too, if you have somebody that sends you an email and they send you a file and you want a quick way to shoot it into a common channel, just you know, have a, a bookmark or have a favorite set up for that channel's email address. Just forward that email to the channel, that file gets automatically saved. It's a, it's a great little shortcut. Yeah, so I will say, so up here in the dot, dot, dots, remember everything in Teams is under the dot, dot, dots. There's a get email address item. When you click on that, it will show you what the email address is. Now notice that I said here, we're sending this to harbor at harborcomputerservices.net on in our, in our uh, exchange environment. So um, we actually created a distribution group and we add this ugly email address to it so that we can have a friendly email address that we could actually remember for each of those, each of those channels that we create. So that's just something we do on the, on the admin end to, to make those email addresses easier to use. So otherwise, you do always get this number, your domain name at america.teams.ms, which is the a Teams domain, and they capture it and then they post it into into Teams for you. Not so not terribly we, memorable. No, we, not at all. We only have one outstanding question, which is great. We're keeping up. Um, I which all is, the questions were outstanding, Jackie. <laughs> you're <laughs> all fantastic. Um, which is who can see like who's in a in a channel or a team? So can members and guests see that list of people? I know members can. Can guests see it? Uh, I don't think that guests can see it. Members can absolutely see it. Uh, if you again go to your dot dot dots um, and uh, you'll come up here to manage team. Uh, if you're not an owner of the team, you won't be able to make changes, but you will be able to see who the members of the team are. Um, there's one one new thing here that I actually didn't message mention, and this is tags. Tags is, tags are brand new. So um, I, mean, I talked about at mention. I can actually at tag. So as a as an administrator or an owner of the group, I can create tags. So imagine that instead of there being um, nine people in this group, imagine that there's 150 people in this group. And um, it's common perhaps for some people to want to communicate into small groups. Doesn't maybe rise to the uh, level of, hey, we need to create a channel for them. But uh, as I'm going along, I can say at office and people with the office tag, which is me and Ted, um, would both be, be alerted that that conversation that's going on is, for, is specifically for us. Uh, and so that's kind of a, a nice way to help call out conversations that are important to specific people. Gotcha. And Ross says that's what he was talking about with the, the at tags. Uh, but Ross, I'd love to talk to you more about that and, and see maybe where the problem is because I haven't experienced that yet. So um, if you want to email me offline, we'll we'll take a look at it. Do you say, Ross, you created the tags on the mobile and then you're not seeing them in the desktop client? Is that what the situation is? I haven't I tried like that yet. On, on the desktop app, and then he could only use them on the mobile. So created on the desktop, and they didn't work on the desktop. What? So the well, the way that you use them on the desk, so you'd be able to see if they're there for one thing. So, um, so come into manage team and make sure that you've got people assigned to the tags. Right, so like Ted's got four tags, Sarah only has two tags. Um, and then once you're, once you're in the team, the way you use it is you just add, mention that. So it would add office, when I spell correctly, it would tell me there's an office tag and three people have the tags. So you have to know that it exists. And I could say, you know, the, um, what it is that I, I want to add mention them about. Russ says, I can see them, they just don't appear in the pull down in the desktop app. Mm. Where is it you see them if they're not in the pull down? Pull down, I'm so, assuming, in the menu. Well, he would, I think he's saying he sees them in the manage team. Um, they should be available there then. If you're seeing them there, they should be available for, for use. Just put, be sure you put the at in front. Yeah, let's, let's, let's maybe take a look offline, Ross. We'll try to see what's going on there. Um, 
I, I did check Amy because I'm a guest and you're a tenant. And so when I looked at the Amy group, I can see all the members of the Amy group. So guests do see who the members are. Okay. Or can see who the members are. Do we have any other questions? Not that I caught. I don't see any raised hands. I did share our free Teams Essentials trainings in the chat. If you want oh, to look for that. Yeah, for anybody who's new to Teams, um, so we, we Bigger Brains, we have two Microsoft Teams courses. Uh, one's called Teams Essentials, which is a, a short um, get you up to speed fast kind of a, a course. And we put that one out for free on YouTube. So um, when all this pandemic stuff started. So that one's free on YouTube. We have a longer course as well called Mastering Microsoft Teams. If you really want to get into all the details of the stuff behind the scenes, but the Teams Essentials is, is free on YouTube. This is amazing. We're exactly an hour in and there's no more questions. That never happens. It's perfect. We did a good job. That's what that says. Wow, you did a good job. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I appreciate you so much uh, being on the call. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you do have other questions you'd like to see us address in future uh, of these free training sessions, um, definitely let me know. Um, I'm going to uh, put up my thing here. There we go. And there we go. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to hit up our website and use the contact us or email me. I'm chip at bigger-brains.com. Uh, and don't forget to join us also next week. Uh, Robert Crane is going to be here, uh, same time, same place, uh, talking about uh, being productive with OneNote. Uh, and OneNote is one of those tools that often gets neglected, I think, in the Microsoft Office suite, but it's really got some power to it. There's a lot of stuff you can do with OneNote, including integrating it with Microsoft Teams, too. So we'll probably touch on that, too, in, in Robert's talk. So, uh, Jackie, do we have any last minute questions? No, just some people saying thank you. All right. Amy, thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, being willing to share your expertise as always. And I think it's helpful for a lot of people. Uh, hey, you're welcome. For anybody who uh, missed it, the recording will be up on YouTube as soon as we can get it up on YouTube.